The area under a velocity time graph is equal to the distance travelled in this time. Remember that a velocity time graph shows us what the velocity of an object is at each point in time, with its gradient telling us its acceleration. In this case, the graph is horizontal and has no gradient. Therefore, there's no acceleration and a constant velocity. Now, why does this area under the graph tell us the distance travelled? In general, that's quite a complicated question to answer, but for this case, it's a lot easier. First, let's remind ourselves about the relation between speed and distance. This is the equation. Speed equals distance travelled divided by time. Or in equation form, this is v equals s divided by t, where v is the speed s is the distance, and t is the time. If there's no change in direction, we could also say that v represents velocity. If we rearrange this by multiplying both sides by t, we get that vt is equal to s. But how does this relate to the graph? Well, let's suppose that our constant velocity is v, and the area we're looking for ends at time t. So this shaded area is then found by multiplying the base of the rectangle t by its height v to get that the area is vt. But we've just said that vt is equal to s, so this means that the area equals s. In general though, the velocity would be changing. Finding the area is a special way of multiplying velocity by time while taking this into account. You definitely don't need to understand how that works at GCSE, but you should at least have a basic understanding of why there is some relation between area and distance. Namely, that we're sort of doing velocity multiplied by time, like in the equation. So what kinds of graphs would you be expected to find areas for at GCSE? Let's have a look. Well, we can calculate the area by splitting the graph's shape into triangles and rectangles. For example, this graph here has a changing velocity. We see an acceleration at the start, then a period of constant velocity, and then a deceleration at the end. Since the velocity is changing, we can't just do velocity multiplied by time. We have to calculate the area under the graph instead. You could use the formula for the area of a trapezium, but this isn't given to you and you aren't expected to know it for science exams. Instead, we can split up this shape into two triangles and a rectangle. Let's label these 1, 2 and 3. We can then find the areas individually using half times base times height for the triangles and base times height for the rectangle. Then the total area is these areas added together. So the distance is equal to area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. Again, you don't need to fully understand how this gives us the exact distance, but you'll need to know that when an exam question asks you to find the distance travelled from a velocity time graph, it's the area under the graph that you need to calculate. Let's do a full example to practice this. The velocity time graph below shows how the velocity of a dog changes as it runs to catch a ball. Calculate the distance the dog runs in order to catch the ball. So for step one, split the shape into triangles and rectangles. Again, this is the expected method for a physics exam, but you won't be penalised if you use a formula for a trapezium instead. Let's split the graph up like this, so we have a rectangle in the middle and a triangle either side. For step two, calculate the area of the first triangle. To do this, we'll be using the formula area equals half times base times height. So we have that the area is equal to a half times and then our base is the change in time, which is one second, and the height is the change in velocity, which is 14 meters per second. These units have come from the axes labels on the graph. So after doing the multiplication, we find the area of this triangle represents an area of seven meters. In step three, we need to calculate the area of the rectangle. This time we'll be using the formula area is equal to the base multiplied by the height. So we have that the area equals, and then the base is the change in time, which is 0.75 seconds, and the height is the velocity, 
which is 14 metres per second. This means that the area of the rectangle is 10.5 metres. Then in step 4, calculate the area of the last triangle. So we'll be going back to our previous formula for the area of a triangle. So the area is equal to half times base times height. So this area is a half times the base, which is 1.75 seconds, times the height, which is 14 metres per second. So this gives us an area, and therefore distance, of 12.25 metres. Now let's put all of this together, and in step 5, add up the areas to find the total distance travelled. So the total distance is equal to 7 metres, plus 10.5 metres, plus 12.25 metres. This is the sum of the first triangle, the rectangle, and the final triangle. Adding these together gives a total distance of 29.75 metres. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.